Hello everybody. In this session we are going to solve previous year's questions from NEET of Physics Class 12 Chapter 1 Electric Charges and Fields. Question 1. A charge Q is located at the center of a cube. The electric flux through any surface is according to Gauss law the flux through any closed surface is Q by epsilon naught. Here in cube there are six faces so therefore the flux is Q divided by 6 epsilon naught which is equal to 4 pi q divided by 6 into 4 pi epsilon naught. Therefore, it is option B. Question 2. An electron is moving around the nucleus of a hydrogen atom in a circular orbit of radius r. The Coulomb force F between the two is charge on hydrogen nucleus is positive V because it contains only proton. Charge on electron is minus E. Coulomb force is given by kq1 q2 by r square. In vector form, it is represented by k e squared by r cube with sign negative sign so it is option d question 3 an electric dipole moment of p is lying along a uniform electric field e the work done in rotating the dipole by 90 degree is so the work done is given by p e sin theta Here theta is 90 degree therefore it is p e Option A. Question 4. A square surface of side L meters is in the plane of the paper. A uniform electric field E also in the plane of the paper is limited only to lower half of the square surface. The electric flux in SI units associated with the surface is. Electric flux is the number of field lines passing through a given area. But here, if this is the plane of the paper, the electric field lines are passing over the plane of the paper and not through the plane of the paper so therefore the flux is zero so flux is given by e a cos theta where e is electric field a is area vector and theta is the angle between them the direction of area vector is always outward normal from the sur first surface and here in the given problem the direction of electric field is over the plane, plane of paper so the angle between them is 90 degree cos 90 is zero so therefore the flux is zero. Question 5. A hollow cylinder has a charge Q coulomb within it. If phi is the electric flux associated in units of voltmeter with the curved surface B, the flux linked with the plane surface A in units of voltmeter will be. So according to Gauss law, the flux through any closed surface is Q by x, epsilon and naught. The total flux in this problem, so the flux through B plus flux through C plus flux through A is equal to Q by epsilon and naught. Since flux from A and C are equal, so therefore 2 phi A plus phi B is equal to Q by epsilon and naught. And phi B is given as phi, so therefore by solving we get half into cube epsilon naught minus phi. Again it is option D. Question 6. There are three point charges plus Q minus 2Q and plus Q are placed at points x is equal to 0, y is equal to a and z is equal to 0, x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, z is equal to 0 and x is equal to a, y is equal to 0, z is equal to 0 respectively. The magnitude and direction of the electric dipole moment vector of this charge assembly are so as given in the problem the charges are placed at respective points such as y is equal to a at origin and x is equal to a we can split this into two dipoles one along y direction one along x direction and the dipole moments are q into a the resultant dipole is root 2 into QA and it is in 45 degree from OP. So therefore it is option A. Root 2 QA along the line joining points x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, z is equal to 0 from origin and x is equal to A, y is equal to A and z is equal to 0. Question 7. A thin conducting ring of radius R is given a charge plus Q. The electric field at the center O of the ring due to the charge on the part 
AKB of the ring is E. The electric field at the center due to the charge on the part ACBD is. So here, the fields at O due to AC and BD cancel each other. The field due to CD is acting towards OK, towards the center and equal in magnitude due to AKB. So therefore, it is option D. Question 8. Two positive ions each carrying a charge Q are separated by a distance D. If F is the force of repulsion between these ions, the number of electrons missing from each ion will be. According to Coulomb's law, F is equal to K Q1 Q2 by R square, where here R is D, which gives F is equal to Q square by 4 epsilon naught into D square, and Q is equal to root of F into 4 epsilon naught into D square. We also know that Q is equal to ME. By substituting, we get the value of N as root of 4 pi epsilon naught F D square divided by E square, which gives us option C. Question 9. A square surface of side L meter in the plane of the paper is placed in a uniform electric field acting along the same plane at an angle theta with the horizontal side of the square as shown in the figure. The electric flux linked to the, to the surface in volt per meter is. Here again, the angle between electric field and area vector is 90 degree. So therefore the flux is zero. This angle is not between electric field and area vector. It is option D. Question 10. The elect electric field at a distance 3R by 2 from the center of a charge, charge conducting spherical shell of radius R is E. The electric field at a distance R by 2 from the center of the sphere is electric field inside charge conductor it is always 0. Question Question 11. A charge Q is enclosed by a Gaussian spherical surface of radius R. If the radius is doubled, then the outward flux will. Option A increase 4 times, which should be reduced to half. Option C remain the same, or option D be doubled. But according to Gauss's law, flux is equal to charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Flux only depends on charge enclosed and not on anything else. So it remains the same. What is a flux through a cube of side A if a point charge of Q is at one of its corner. 8 identical cubes are required so that the given charge Q appears at the center of the bigger cube as the electric flux passing through the cube is given by 1 by 8 into cube epsilon naught which is equal to Q by 8 epsilon naught which is option B. 13. Two pit balls carrying equal charges are suspended from a common point by strings of equal length. The equilibrium separation between them is R. Now the strings are rigidly clamped at half the height. The equilibrium separation between the balls now become Let M be the mass of each ball and Q be the charge on each ball. The force of repulsion between these two is given by KQ square by R square since they both have same charge. In equal here T is tension in the strings and we can split it into its components. Here theta is the angle between the string and the normal. These both are equal alternate angles and we can split into its component as T cos theta component with theta and T sin theta component other from theta. Lf is the force of, force of repulsion and mg is the weight of the ball. So therefore in equilibrium T cos theta is equal to mg and T sin theta is equal to f. By dividing equation 2 by equation 1 we get tan theta is equal to f by mg. f is kq square by r square divided by mg. From this figure we can get tan theta as tan theta as we know is opposite by adjacent. Here the distance between two balls is r and the distance the half the distance is r by 2 opposite divided by y which gives 
के क्यू स्क्वायर बाय स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय एमजी इट इज इक्वेशन थ्री हियर एट द सेकंड कंडीशन वेयर द बॉल्स आर क्लाइंबड एट हाफ द डिस्टेंस हाफ द हाइट tan हियर थीटा डैश इज द एंगल tan थीटा डैश इज गिवन बाय के क्यू स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय आर डैश स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय एमजी and from this figure we can get tan theta dash as r dash this is the r dash divided by 2 equilibrium separation divided by y by 2 which again gives kq square divided by r dash square divided by mg this is equation 4 if we divide equation 4 by equation 3 we get 2 r dash divided by r is equal to r square by r dash whole square here r is the equilibrium separation initially and r dash is the equilibrium separation which we have to find therefore r dash cube is given by r cube divided by 2 r dash is equal to r by cube root of 2 question 13 option d 14 a charge q is placed at center of the line joining two equal charges q the system of the three charges will be in equilibrium if q is equal to according to the problem two charge equal charges are placed at a and b a small charge is placed at c the distance between the two equal charges is 2r for equilibrium the net force on any one of the bigger charges should be zero so the force let's take a force on charge q is zero here just two forces are acting one is the repulsive force between equal charges and other is the smaller repulsive force between big charge and small charge so we get kq into capital q into capital q divided by 2r whole square plus kq into small q divided by r square which is equal to zero by solving wet we get capital q as minus 4q and the charge we need small q is equal to minus q by 4 14th is option a 15th the electric field in a certain region is acting radially outward and is given by e is equal to ar a charge contained in a sphere of radius a centered at the origin of the field will be given by Okay. As given in the problem, electric field varies as E is equal to A R, where R is the radial distance. At R is equal to A, we get E is equal to capital N into small A. Net flux from the spherical surface of radius A from Gauss law is given by Q enclosed by epsilon naught. Also, we know that phi is equal to E A cos theta. Here theta is zero because angle between area vector, which is outward normal, and the electric field. Which also radiates outward is zero. So E A is equal to A into small a into four pi r square area of the sphere is equal to Q by epsilon naught. We get this from equation one. So therefore Q is equal to four pi epsilon naught A into A Q. By solving, fifteenth is option A. Sixteen. two identical charged spheres suspended from a common point by two massless strings of length l are initially at a distance d apart because of their mutual repulsion the charges begin to leak from both the spheres at a constant rate as a result the spheres approach each other with a velocity v then v varies as a function of the distance x between the spheres as it is similar to the previous one from the figure you can get t cos theta is equal to mg and t sin theta is equal to f which is kq square by x square the distance between them from 1 and 2 we get tan theta is equal to kq square by x square into mg since theta is very small tan theta is approximately equal to sin theta and sin theta is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse here x divided by x by 2 divided by l l is the length of string Which gives us x by 2l, and also x by 2l is equal to k q square by x square into mg, which gives charge is equal to charge square is equal to x cube mg by 2 into l k. Or we can as arrive that at a relation at q is directly proportional to x 
whole power 3 by 2 differentiation bo both sides dq by dt is directly proportional to 3 by 2 root of x into dx by dt because differentiation of x power n is equal to n into x power n minus 1 from that formula we arrive at this relation and it is equal to 3 by 2 root of x into v because dx by dt differentiation of displacement is velocity since dq by dt is constant because the charges leak at a constant rate so we get v is directly proportional to 1 by root of x which is equal to v is directly proportional to x power minus 1 by 2 which gives us option a Seventeen, an electric dipole is placed at an angle of theta degree, 30 degree with an electric field intensity 2 into 10 power 5 newton per coulomb it experiences a torque equal to 4 newton into meter the charge in the dipole if the dipole length is 2 centimeter is we have the relation tau torque is equal to pe sin theta p is the dipole moment which is equal to q into l charge into dipole length into e sin theta torque is given as 4 newton into meter which is equal to q charge into dipole length is 2 centimeter which is equal to 2 into 10 power minus 2 meter electric field intensity is 2 into 10 power 5 newton per coulomb and theta is 30 degree by solving we get q is equal to 2 into 10 power minus 3 coulomb which is 2 milli coulomb option b 18 Suppose the charge of a proton and an electron differs slightly. One of them is minus E, the other is E plus delta E. If the net of electrostatic force and gravitational force between two hydrogen atoms placed at a distance d much greater than atomic size apart is zero, then delta E is of the order of, and they have given the mass of hydrogen. Hydrogen contains one electron and one proton. Charge in one hydrogen atom is equal to charge of electron plus charge of proton, which gives delta E. Net charge is delta E. Electrostatic force between hydrogen atoms is two hydrogen atoms is F E electrostatic is equal to K into delta E whole square divided by D square because K Q1 Q2 by R square Q1 and Q2 is equal to delta E. It is equation 1. Gravitational force between hydrogen atoms, two hydrogen atoms is Fg is equal to G universal gravitational constant into M mass of hydrogen whole square divided by D square. Net force on the system is zero, therefore electrostatic force is equal to gravitational force. We substitute this and then since we have to get the order of delta E, we simplify it, we get G into mh whole square divided by k, where k is Coulomb's constant, which is equal to 9 into 10 power 9. G gravitational constant is 6 into 6, 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 and the mass of hydrogen is given 1.67 into 10 power minus 27 whole square. By solving, we get the order of delta E as 10 power minus 37 coulomb. It is option B. 19. An electron falls from rest through a vertical distance h in a uniform and vertically upward directed electric field E. The direction of the electric field is now reversed, keeping its magnitude same. A proton is allowed to fall from the rest in it through the same vertical distance h. The time of fall of electron in comparison to the time of fall of proton is. Force experienced by a charged particle in an electric field is given by F is equal to Q into E. Where Q is charge, E is electric field. Also, F is equal to MA. By substituting, we get MA is equal to Q into E which gives us acceleration is equal to QE divided by M. It is equation 1. Electron and proton both st fall from the same height at rest. So therefore initial velocity is 0. We have S is equal to UD plus half AT square. Here H is the vertical distance. H is equal to half AT square since U is equal to 0. And we substitute the value of A. We get H is equal to half QE divided by M T square. Then we arrive there at the relation of T is equal to root of 2 HM divided by QE which implies T is directly proportional to root of M since charge is same for both electron and proton. Electron has less smaller mass hence it will take less time. So question 19 A. Electron takes smaller time. 
क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी अ टॉय कार विथ चार्ज क्यू मूव ऑन अ फ्रिक्शनलेस हॉरिजोंटल प्लेन सरफेस अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ अ यूनिफॉर्म इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ई ड्यू टू द फोर्स क्यू ई इट्स वेलासिटी इंक्रीजेस फ्राम जीरो टू सिक्स मीटर पर सेकेंड इन वन सेकेंड ड्यूरेशन एट दैट इंस्टेंट द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द फील्ड इज रिवर्स द कार कंटिन्यूस टू मूव फॉर टू मोर सेकेंड्स अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ दिस फील्ड द एवरेज वेलासिटी एंड द एवरेज स्पीड ऑफ द टॉय कार बिटवीन जीरो टू थ्री सेकेंड्स आर रिस्पेक्टिवली सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द प्रॉब्लम वी हैव द पार्ट ऑफ द टॉय कार एट टाइम टी इजल टू जीरो वेलासिटी जीरो एंड सिंस इट एक्सलेट्स इन द यूनिफॉर्म इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड वन टी इज इक्वल टू वन सेकेंड वेलासिटी इज सिक्स मीटर पर सेकेंड पॉजिटिव एक्सलेशन देन द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इज रिवर्स दैन वी गेट नेगेटिव एक्सलेशन एट टी इज इक्वल टू टू वी इज इक्वल टू जीरो अगेन वन सेकेंड विथ नेगेटिव एक्सलेशन वी गेट वी इज इक्वल टू माइनस सिक्स मीटर पर सेकेंड एट टी इज इक्वल टू थ्री सेकेंड एक्सलेशन इज इक्वल टू सिक्स माइनस जीरो बाई वन फाइनल वेलासिटी माइनस इनिशियल वेलासिटी डिवाइडेड बाई टाइम which is equal to 6 meter per second square for t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 1 second 0 to 1 second s1 is equal to half into a t square because initial velocity is 0 6 is the acceleration 1 is the time duration so therefore s1 is equal to 3 meter equation 1 for t is equal to 1 to t is equal to 2 S two is equal to six into one minus half into six into t square. Here six is initial velocity for this path. So we get S two is equal to three meter. Question two: For t is equal to two second to t is equal to three second. S three is equal to zero minus half a t square, which is equal to minus three meter. Question three: The total displacement is s is equal to s one plus s two plus s three, which gives three meter. The displacement is three meter. So therefore, average velocity is displacement divided by total time taken, s three seconds, which is equal to one meter per second. Total distance travelled is nine meter. Average speed is distance travelled by total time taken, which gives three meter per second. So it is option B. Twenty option B. One meter per second and three meter per second. Twenty-one. A hollow metal sphere of radius r is uniformly charged. The electric field due to the sphere at this at a distance r from the center. Option A decreases r as r increases for r is lesser than radius and for r distance is greater than radius. It is wrong. Option B increases as r. Increases for r is lesser than radius and r is greater than radius. It is also false. C zero as r increases for r is lesser than radius decreases as r increases for r is greater than radius. That is correct because in a uniformly charged hollow sphere, hollow conducting sphere, for the distance r lesser than radius, which means inside the sphere the electric field is zero for small r the distance greater than radius which means outside the sphere electric field is given by kq divided by r square and it decreases as the distance increases so it is option c 22 a point two point charges a and b having charges plus q and minus q respectively are placed at certain distance apart and force acting between them is f If 25% of charge A is transferred to B, then force between the charges becomes. So here, initially before the charge transfer, the force is minus k q square divided by r square, where plus q and minus q are the two charges placed at points A and B. After charge transfer of 25%, which means q by 4, so charge is transferred from A to charge B. Therefore, q A is equal to The initial charge minus q by four, and q b is equal to the initial charge minus q plus q by four. So therefore, the final charge becomes q a is equal to three q by four, and q b is equal to minus three q by four. F dash the final charge force is equal to k into q one q two divided by r square. The final charges, which gives f dash is equal to 
9 by 16 into minus kq square by r square this is the initial charge therefore f dash to the final charge is equal to 9 by 16 f therefore it is option c 23 a spherical conductor of radius 10 cm has a charge of 3.2 into 10 power minus 7 coulomb distributed uniformly what is the magnitude of electric field at a point 15 cm from the center of the sphere the value of k is given as 9 into 10 power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square so they are asking electric field since we know electric field is equal to kq by r square outside a sphere connecting spherical sur start surface so which gives us 9 into 10 power 9 into 3.2 into 10 power minus 7 charge also is given and the distance also is given 15 into 10 power minus 2 whole square by solving we get 1.28 into 10 power 5 newton meter square per coulomb square it is option D so that's it for today like subscribe and share for more